subscribers into Vikings Vet Line. And now, he's one of the biggest Vikings YouTube superstars on Earth. His Vikings pain is now your game. This is Realistic Randy Rants with Randy and Declan on Purple Daily and Score North. Ask and you shall receive, my man, Realistic Randy. You know, you and I like to kick around some ideas going in as the, you know, as the studious prep notes we are for Realistic Randy Rants and Purple Daily and Score North. And then about, I don't know, we record these on, on Monday afternoon, late Monday morning, your time in California. And we had a little bit of a bombshell kind of drop to kind of give us a, a, another flavor for this episode. Uh, the Vikings are reportedly listening for trade offers for backup running back Alexander Madison. Now, we've kind of kicked around this idea. You and I have uh, talked about this. Uh, Mackie Judd and myself have also talked about this throughout this training camp. So here's the lowdown, and then we're going to get into this here on Realistic Randy Rants on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button for Daily Minnesota Vikings Entertainment. That's our guy, Realistic Randy. You can subscribe to his channel as well. Uh, but the Vikings are reportedly listening for trade offers for Alexander Madison. Uh, that, that was that was dropped on Monday morning. Chris Thomason, Vikings insider, kind of picked that up and said he had talked to some po- folks, and at least 12 teams have called on the availability as of Alexander Madison, who is a free agent at the end of the season. Some interesting skill position players also behind Alexander Madison. So from the Vikings side, they could even be, even be looking to move on from him. They won't be giving him away necessarily. But uh, Randy, your thoughts here on the Vikings potentially maybe making a trade before the season starts of moving on from Alexander Madison. 12 teams calling the Vikings on Alexander Madison is wild because I've talked about this on my channel as far as what teams would be in desperate need of a running back. Not very many, but 12 teams. Although I will say the individual that I feel like is behind all of these calls to Minnesota is none other than Howie Roseman of the Philadelphia Eagles. For some reason, the Eagles seem reportedly seem to be the team that's most in desperate need for a running back. I like Miles Sanders, but his durability has been a question mark the last two years. They also have Kenneth Gainwell that they like, but not much else after that. As far as compensation wise, pick wise, what you could get from Madison, I I honestly don't feel like the Vikings would get anything more than what they would get in a compensatory pick if they mm-hmm. simply allow Madison to walk in free agency in 2023. However, what would make sense for the Vikings, compensation-wise, is a player swap. The Vikings desperately need mm-hmm. a center and a tight end. As it relates to Philadelphia, obviously they're not going to trade Jason Kelsey. They just drafted their backup center, Cam Jurgens in the second round, so that's out. Obviously, they're not going to trade their starting tight end, Dallas Goddard, The depth behind him is not great, so it would not make sense. However, regardless if they make this trade with Philadelphia or if they can find the compensation they want around the league, go for it. But if they don't, I can still see a situation, chess over checkers, where the Vikings still make this trade regardless of the compensation they get back. That is if and only if they value, we talk about value so much in the in the draft and value this value that if they value getting significant reps quality experience for guys like ty chandler and kane and wangu right now opposed to waiting a year later after madison leaves i could see a situation to where they say screw it we'll go ahead and trade madison because one of these two guys they're going to be a heavy hitter for us so i I think there's a few reasons why madison becomes expendable you touched on the first reason that the depth behind him and the players that we've seen show up uh, in training camp and preseason games and even dating back to last year with Wang Wu um, have kind of made him look a little bit more expendable. Uh, Madison's more of a traditional back. He can catch some passes, but certainly doesn't have getaway speed or getaway quickness um, that makes him elusive in today's running back era. Um, He's more of a, your traditional running back from back in the day that you can hand the ball off, you know, straight up the middle and he can probably get you three to four yards. Um, So I think that's number one that the Vikings would listen on those trade offers. Number two is, is another team either not impressed with their running back depth or running back starter, or also is someone injured because someone hurt that maybe they don't foresee being ready for week one. 
I always kind of thought that would be the first domino to fall if you were to trade Madison because obviously then a team would be in more desperate need of a running back. So the fact the Vikings, I think, are listening to the offers is pretty telling. You bring up the point about the comp pick. So yeah, he could get you a fourth or a fifth, I believe, uh, in, in, in a compensation pick if he were to walk in free agency. The Vikings probably have no ind- uh, no intention of signing him to a long-term deal yeah. uh, with just the state of how running backs are used and drafted, the depth behind Dalvin Cook. And from Madison's side, just from his side here, he wants to be a starting running back. Now, could you make a case that is he legitimate RB1 on some teams? Yeah, I think you could. Sure. I think you could make a case he's a starting running back on some teams. Is he going to put himself in an elite category of being like one of the top 10 running backs in the NFL with that new franchise? Probably not. But he wants his, and rightfully so, so I get that. So I also kind of wonder how much is it maybe Madison's camp saying, hey, you know, I'm fine being a great teammate. I love helping out Dalvin Cook. I love helping out the Vikings, but also... I want to be the starting running back here. I mean, that's just, and that's not a self, I don't view that as a selfish move on his end either, by the way. I'm not trying to make it sound like he's being selfish that he wants to be the starting running back. He's proved that when he has stepped in for Dalvin Cook, he can take the workload, give you about 100 yards. He's done it before a few times. So I can see also maybe Madison's camp being the driving force also behind some of this saying, hey, we'll listen to offers or hey, we would like an opportunity elsewhere where maybe we can be the number one starter on a team. I think what's stopping him from potentially being in that elite category is because the great running backs in this league, Jonathan Taylor, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, they can make something out of nothing plays happen on a routine basis. Vision is key. And Madison so far in his career has not demonstrated that vision. We talk about Seattle a couple of years ago. If you cut right, the Vikings win that game. <laughs> Yeah. There are too many times I just feel like he puts his head down and just goes straight forward and I'm just going to bruise my way for those yards. I don't think it's sustainable, certainly in the middle tier. But as far as he wants to be a starting running back, sure, go ahead and do it. But the most that I can see him getting is a year audition with another team before they say, OK, let's draft somebody else the next year, mm. because I just don't think he has those skill sets that separate that would separate him from the rest of the pack, which is why those elite running backs, they're going to get a ton of money. I was, I've always talked about for the last couple of weeks now, Declan Goff, maybe Pittsburgh, they have a backup Hmm. center and JC Hassenauer. And up until now, after Najee Harris, they really haven't had a true RB two on their team, but reportedly they really like Jalen Warren. So that's out. But I, besides Philadelphia, I'm just trying to sit here and think, who is that team? If he wants to be a starting running back right now, who is that team besides Philadelphia that can make that happen? I honest to God can't think of one right now. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, us our, our, our tunnel vision on for the team that you watch and cover and, and look at the most of the days, you know, you kind of lose you lose your ideas and lose the other team's thoughts. That's my problem with fantasy sure. football, Randy. Yeah. Like sure. I've I've thought I've stopped playing fantasy football. And there's like some running backs that I like see on cheat sheets list that I just always like to go and see. I'm like, I have never heard of that guy. Or like, who is that guy? Why is he the eighth best running back now in fantasy football? I couldn't pick him out of a hat sometimes. Um, so that's fine. But also you brought up the point of the of what else you could get back in return. So maybe if it's not a draft pick, like let's say um, the bare minimum you'd get an Alan Alexander Madison trade from another team's a fifth round pick. If they got a fourth or above, I mean, my God, take it and run to the bank. I, I just don't foresee a team giving up more capital than that because they can find an Alexander Madison esque player in those rounds. So why would you give up something more? But you bring up uh, the point of maybe getting a player back, maybe yeah. getting a backup center back, maybe getting a legitimate second tight end. Because if Irv Smith suffers another injury or maybe even a setback, well, now you're also pretty weak at that position. So I, I think there's actually a couple different paths here that the Vikings are taking because they're, they won't give away Alex Madison and, and nor should they, they're not going to cut him. They shouldn't cut him. Sure. Um, and you shouldn't just give up a seventh round pick for him because you want him off your roster that bad, unless you really believe in like Ty Chandler and Kane that can be your backup running backs. I'm bullish on them. And in fact, you know, Judd did his mock roster update here on this channel. And, and he actually had the Vikings keeping four running backs on the 53 which I think would be a little bit rare in today's NFL, but it, but that that's because Ty Chandler has showed up, right? Like you don't want to, I think he has done enough on tape that if you put him on the practice squad, you put him to waivers, I do think someone would put a claim on him. Well, I, I oh, certainly yeah. would. So you don't want to lose him. 
But then also, if you're going to give up Madison and you're not really interested in getting a fifth round pick, you're you're more hell bent on, hey, we got some depth questions here on our line, got some depth questions at tight end. I, I wouldn't fault the Vikings at all for also listening to those offers because they actually could get something back in return in that area that could also help them down the road more. Yeah, if you could get something on the offensive line, that'd be great. I don't know if that's going to happen, but as far as, I guess to shift a little bit here, sidebar, speaking of the offensive line, I love how this preseason, it feels like every week there's something good, something positive to talk about on the offensive line. For the most part, it's been Ed Ingram, but we talk about center. Chris Mm -hmm. Reed, Declan Goff at right guard. He was legit, and I get it. The last preseason game, the teams are emptying out their bench, so the (laughs) quality isn't great. At right guard, he was fantastic. And then they went ahead, the Vikings went ahead, second quarter, and played this dude at center. And I said, what? It's a party now. And he was legit. Whatever issues Chris Reed had at snapping the ball in training camp, it wasn't there that game against Denver. In fact, if there was a snapping issue, it was on Austin Schlotman, who had a clumsy snap that led to a snap infraction. But I think the player swap for Madison makes the most sense, whether it's a tight end, a center, someone on the offensive line. I just don't know if they are going to get that. I feel like the only way a trade happens is if the Vikings on their Quasi and Kevin O'Connell right now on their third and fourth cups of coffee, if they're just sitting here saying, you know what, listen, man, we really believe in Ty Chandler and Kane and Wangu. Let's go ahead and give them a jump start to be ready to be a true elite RB2 next year. Or if they decide to move on from Dalvin Cook, which eventually that train is going to come, we can get ahead of it now. I feel like that's the only way that happens, and I would get it. I would not fault the Vikings for that. Yeah, so uh, there's a couple paths. You can get the draft pick. You could get a player depth kind of swap there. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of still trying to figure out which way they will probably end up going. I don't think they'll settle for a draft pick. I think their initial asking price is going to be a player. They're going to want someone maybe back in return, right? Um, so I, and I, it, that makes more sense. I'd rather take the chance that a depth player who's maybe being blocked or could be utilized more in the Viking system from another team can actually turn out to be something over, you know, taking the fifth round lottery ticket, um, which, you know, you can find a Ty Chandler in the fifth round, which is great. Um, but I also, I, I, the 2022 Vikings probably want something back in return that can still help them now. So I think that's kind of uh, where I would go as well. You know, Randy, you also were talking to me about how there's maybe even some more reckless speculation out of your bag here. In fact, I'll hit you with this. Reckless speculation. So you were talking to me off mic. So obviously the Alexander Madison is uh, potentially could be on the move here. And by the way, we're recording this on a Monday afternoon. So if he is moved and you're still consuming this and we haven't talked about it right now, right? Exactly. Doing it on the, doing it on the fly. Uh, (laughs) Hit the subscribe button for more entertainment and we'll break it down as we get there. But you actually have some more reckless speculation on the Vikings adding at maybe tight end behind Herb Smith Jr. So who are you looking that the Vikings for Kwesi and Adolfo Mensa could pick up the phone call and maybe facilitate, maybe you even put it the call in yourself. Who is this tight end you're looking at? Well, I want to preface it with this. The name that I am about to give you, Declan Goff, and the viewers out there, initially you are going to say, WTF Randy, what are you talking about? But understand where I'm coming from. The Vikings are in desperate need of a tight end. Two of the tight ends that are, check notes here, still, as of this recording right now, still on the roster. Two of these dudes cannot catch the ball in Zach Davison and Nick Muse. That is a problem if you are a tight end. And I feel like for this move to happen, I don't know. I feel like the Vikings can go far this year into the playoffs. I don't know if the Vikings themselves view them in that point. As far as win now, I think they could potentially win it all. I don't know if the Vikings themselves view it. But the Miami Dolphins are listening to offers for tight end Mike Gusecki. I think Mm. the Vikings should put in an offer for him. And furthermore, I want to look at it from this. 
we talk about Adam Thielen. We disagree on this all the time. I think Adam Thielen is gone after next year. So if that is the case, if that does come to fruition, the natural thing is to say, well, okay, what wide receiver are we going to fill in for him? Could it be a KJ Osborne? Could it be someone else in the draft? I want to look at it beyond that scope and say, instead of a wide receiver, what pass catching weapon can we replace if Thielen were to go? And I'm telling you right now, the Patriots, when they ran those double tight end sets with Aaron Hernandez and Rob Gronkowski, it was incredible. It was so special to where you could still have Justin Jefferson in the middle of the field with Irv, if he can still stay healthy. We're still waiting waiting for that breakout season from him. But if he can stay healthy and Mike Gusecki, they could carve up the middle of that field all day long long to where if you do bring a safety up into the box to cover that well justin jefferson there's a good chance once in a while he'll be left in one-on-one coverage i think the vikings should make a call he is in a contract year right Mm -hmm. now so the question then becomes how do you make that happen money wise well i'll tell you how (laughs) the minnesota vikings as of right now actually Uh, salary cap here we go okay The Minnesota Vikings right now, as it stands, going into 2023, they have just $782,000 in cap. That's not going to get it done. Gusecki, he's going to want a contract beyond this year. Obviously, might be a bit expensive. Now, if it just, if it sticks to where the Vikings believe that they can make a deep playoff run now, then maybe you do the one-year rental. Sure. But in terms of money beyond this season, how do you make it work? Adam Thielen, I think he's gone. The Vikings, each team in the NFL, they have a post-June 1st de- designation. They have mm-hmm. two of those that they can designate to two different players. So the first one I'm going to do is Adam Thielen, whether it's a cut or restructure in 2023. Adam Thielen. Post June 1st, the Vikings save $13.4 million in cap. Okay. The Vikings then go in 23 to $14.2 million in cap space. But it doesn't stop there. We are also going to go Jordan Hicks, who actually we don't even need to do post June 1st. We can just cut them straight up before June 1st. Vikings then go to 19.2 available. Obviously, you still have to pay Justin Jefferson. Maybe you can backload it beyond 23 to where you can still afford Mike Gusecki. But this is, you want to talk about reckless speculation, Declan Goff? At some point, the Vikings are going to have to move on from Dalvin Cook, the position that he plays. And maybe they keep him next year. But if they don't, the off chance that they don't, I'm going to say a post-June 1st trade the second post-June 1st designation, the Vikings save $11 million in cap. I'm going to submit that right now. And the Vikings have $30.2 million in cap space in 2023. Wow. So you, you, you've just, you just created even um, a, not just a short-term fix, but a long-term fix yes. with both of them. So you're not just doing reckless speculation for the sake of it. You're also providing evidence that says, no, this is not just the Band-Aid move, and then you rip it off, and the, the wound's healed. Like, no, 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 this is going to be something that could be here long-term. Bringing it back, I think, to Gasecki here. So Gasecki, yeah, they're listening for trade offers. Um, he's been a pretty reliable pass-catching tight end for them. He hauled in 73 balls last year for Miami. Um, he is in that contract year, to your point. The knock on him is... He's not a very good blocker, which, by the way, if okay. if Johnny Munt and Nick Muse want to do the blocking, I'm cool with that because right. I don't want them catching the football. Um, so I even wonder if you could even just do it because this makes sense to me. So the the Dolphins' running back depth is is weird. It's it's you know Chase Edmonds from Arizona is is competing uh, with him uh, with Raheem Mostert from also from San Francisco. So they they're doing a committee. They're doing a committee backs right now. They're trying to figure out Sony Michelle's, I think, there too. So they have a bunch of different running backs by committee in, in Miami right now. Yes, they I would actually be willing to bet that Alexander Madison is better than all three of those backs. So is there a scenario where it is that player for player swap 
They get their true RB1 in Alexander Madison. They don't have to roll with this weird committee behind them. You then free up um, Mike Gusecki, who gets a new fresh start with the Vikings. And then you can kind of use the two tight end pass catching set that you've talked about that, yeah, uh, um, Gronk and Aaron Hernandez were, were utilized in the New England Patriots system about 10 years ago. That kind of now created, honestly, the big boom of tight ends over the last 8 to 12 years. So I even wonder if that's just a straight player for player swap because I would be very interested in that. I don't know if Miami would do it, but I'm, I'm curious on that front too. If they would do it, absolutely. You make Take it that trade 10 out of 10 times. I don't know if Miami would do that though. Yeah. Because Chase Edmonds, he's going to be the RB1. Raheem Mostert, the problem for him is durability. When he's healthy, he is a way better running back than Alexander Madison. But Madison has the durability on his side. To your point, they are running a running back by committee situation. Adding Alexander Madison to that would be, it will create a serious log jam because Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, after that, you have Sony Michelle. I don't know if they would. Now, if they do say, hey, we'll give you Mike Kosecki for Madison, then, oh, hell yeah, go ahead and Take make that bank. trade and laugh at it. I don't think they are going to do that, though. I did explore that situation, but position wise and value wise, Kosecki is just above and beyond Madison in every sure. which way. I feel like you would have to find a separate trade partner for Madison and then later go ahead and make the trade for Gusecki. The Vikings right now, they have over 10 million in cap. You can do it. Make it happen. Yeah. I, I, I love, I'm curious on Mike McDaniel in general there. Um, I think he's actually a really insightful, cool dude. I don't know if mm-hmm. he's cut out to be the head coach of an NFL team. Um, Going to be a wait and see kind of situation there. But if you were to do that trade, the Madison for Gusecki trade, then you're probably also looking at kicking in additional compensation to make up, you yes. know, to make it make it even, right? Um, and right now, I believe the Vikings only have they don't they don't have an extra pick in rounds two and three. I, they have a second one here, I believe, in round four from the Browns. So um, th- they would have to kick in probably something else to make it sweetener, and that would probably be a day two pick. And then at that point, you know, is it worth giving up all of that for a tight end who you who could walk in, in three to four months? But you, you need someone there that's behind Irv Smith. I love this idea, dude. I mean, there, there's the possibilities are endless. Um, and if if they're listening on trade offers for Gusecki, kind of similar to what the Vikings are doing, I wonder if there is some type of collaboration there. You know, Mike McDaniel was from San Francisco. I think he was probably gone by the time Kwesi, um was out of San Francisco. But I'm curious. That is awesome. I love the reckless speculation. I, I, I'm I'm much more down to talk about that, and we're going to get into some preseason uh, conversations and notes and roster trimming as we get closer here um, on this episode. But the reckless speculation always wins, so I'm I'm always down to talk about trade ideas with whether it's Alexander Madison or finding a new tight end. Reckless speculation. I'm all about it, my man. So, uh, anything else on this topic before we uh, get into some preseason thoughts? Make it happen. The the tight end group behind Irv Smith Jr. is god awful. By the way, Irv has durability issues. So I know they feel good about him being ready for week one. He's making very good progress, but once in a while he has to take a break. He has to take a breather. If he has to go to the sidelines and you have Johnny Munt or Ben <laughs> Ellison coming out there, then you are in a handicap match. You're a wrestling guy, right? You're, yeah, big time. At that point, you're 10 on 11 in favor of the defense. It makes no sense. You need a tight end. Why not go after Gusecki? And you can maneuver the money around to make that happen, not just this year, but beyond 2022. Do it. it. Do it. Do it up. We'll be ready to break it down if it does happen on this YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. This is Realistic Randy Rants with Realistic Randy. I'm Declan Goff from the Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily Program. All right, man, let's get into some preseason thoughts here. Um, the Vikings wrap up their preseason, their final game against the Denver Broncos. No Nick Mullins, another gong show between Sean Manning and Kellen Mond of who wants it worse. Um, I guess what were your kind of thoughts on that third and final preseason game, which, you know, at, at, at this rate, when that third one comes around and, you know, Mullins isn't playing and there's no punt off like we were going to be promised going into the game. Right. Uh, what were your kind of thoughts at, on the on the final preseason game for the Vikings? There were really just a few bright spots on defense. Luigi Villain really stood out as well as Miles Dorn. And I didn't think that Dorn had a chance to really make this roster. But with these 
two surprise cuts so far. They've made three cuts the Vikings have today. And as I'm refreshing. So my thing is with this, like you said at the start of this podcast, we had this whole game plan of what we were going to talk about. We had to throw it <laughs> in the trash because the way that the past two weeks of cuts have gone to where those cuts have happened on deadline day, I was expecting on Tuesday, wham, here's 27 names cut right now. Instead, it's happening as we speak. But the two surprise cuts that have happened, maybe Miles Dorn has a chance to make this roster. And with the quarterback situation, I just – maybe I've gone too far with the Sean Mannion thing. I've looked for every reason to just – really point out how bad he is at football, but it's not his fault. It's not his fault that he's bad at football and the Vikings keep paying him to be bad at football. I just want this to be over. Finally, you can start from scratch with the backup quarterback situation in 2023. Run into the season with two quarterbacks, Kirk Cousins and Nick Mullins. You'll be fine. But besides those two defensive players, Luigi Belaine, and uh, Miles Dorn, I talked about this earlier, but Chris Reed, I'm telling you, and I don't think I'm as objective as possible. I'm being very fair. I understand that Garrett Bradbury has been terrible. And in some ways, maybe I'm looking for any reason for him to be on the bench. But at the same time, Declan Goff, Chris Reed against backups, competent. I think when it comes to the offensive line for years, we've been saying as Vikings fans, can you just have a competent offensive line? And in pass protection and in run blocking, Chris Reed was excellent. Mm -hmm. He gave you everything you wanted to see. An anchor, fight, just up top, strength in the shoulders, even balance on the footwork. It was incredible. You have that right there. So as bad as that was, especially collectively defense, Mike Boone just torched the Vikings run defense to hell. There were some things, some good things to take away from it. If we can real quick, as far as the cuts that have happened so far, Ty Smith, not really a surprise, the cornerback. T.Y. McGill, preseason legend himself. That's right. <laughs> seven tackles. Three TFLs, three and a half sacks. I said to myself, when the news came out, the Vikings have released T.Y. McGill. I said, what? Really? I thought he was going to have a big role this year as far as contributing on the defensive line. But no moss. The only thing I can come up with is that that ankle injury he suffered to where he was yeah. ruled out the rest of Saturday night's game. I said, it has to be serious. That's the only way that this makes sense. But I guess the chain reaction to that is the one guy I just said, I don't know if he's going to make this roster, a guy that I feel like Vikings Nation, we're all rooting for, Jalen Twyman. After that release, if you want to talk about a guy on the bubble outside looking in whose job may be elevated to make the roster, if we're sticking on defensive line, Jalen Twyman. Maybe he does make the roster after all. And Myron Mitchell, combine that release with B.C. Johnson, which I feel so bad for him. I know. Torn ACL. I mean, my God. He just – I want to see this dude succeed. And I projected him on my own YouTube channel as far as making the 53-man roster. But as far as what you're looking at, and I'm refreshing the Vikings page right now, nothing is happening. But as far as Myron Mitchell being released, B.C. Johnson, he's on IR. It's a lock now because your wide receiver is one through four. Jefferson, Thielen, Osborne, Smith-Marset. After that, it's a lock for Tristan yeah. Jackson and Jalen Naylor to make the roster to where before I said, Naylor, I don't know about this guy. I know the Vikings just drafted him, but I'm not sure about him. They are locks to make the roster now. So, no more cuts after that, T.Y. McGill, Myron Mitchell, and Ty Smith, but it seems like today is going to be a party as far as trimming down this roster. Yeah, I think the cutting of T.Y. McGill isn't that surprising. Like, I I, I think there was some, maybe really? some eyebrows just because, so? no, I, I, I didn't think it was that. I didn't think it was that shocking. Um, I mean, I, the injury play a factor for sure. You know, if he doesn't yeah. hurt his ankle, 
probably makes the 53. Um, he was playing against preseason guys and the guys that probably weren't, you know, that impressive. He was kind of buried even on their second and third depth chart. So I'm not that shocked that he ended up getting getting cut today. Maybe a little more surprising that it came this early instead of closer to the deadline. Um, but at the same time, if you know if someone like Twyman steps up, that's great. I know he might factor in more as a defensive end, but not that surprised that McGill McGill gets cut here on the wide receiver front. Yeah, I think I think Naylor and you know Tristan Jackson have basically, especially the latter, has kind of played himself into a 53 man spot. You know, Jackson, no one saw that coming necessarily. Um, he's has familiar with the offense, so that kind of gave him a leg up too. But he's had a solid preseason, so you know if if the Vikings want to keep five, maybe even six wide receivers, I'm for that. You know, if they don't trade Madison, my thing was, well, just have as many skill position guys as possible, yeah. right? Like, yeah. have four running backs, possibly keep six wide receivers. I'm all for that because I, I feel like there's just so many skill position guys available that can be utilized if there's an injury, even be utilized in, in packages and situations for guys like Chandler and Wang Wu. So I'm not, I'm not that shocked, but I would like those kind of guys to get opportunities, right? Like, I want the skill position dudes to be rewarded. Um, I think the crazier thing is, is you know, they cut Jordan Berry on uh, before the game after they claimed they were going to have a punt off. And they got this big boy Ryan Wright, who's like a 250 pound punter, hitting booms and holding still for Greg Joseph. It's actually wild to me that the Vikings and knock on wood here, but like they seem to actually have stability at their kicker and their punter which is something that Zimmer like had to change every year. Like it just, it was something that had to be plucked and had to be different year in and year out. And we've all known about Greg Joseph having a really strong camp. So I guess that one's not too surprising, but even with Jordan Berry, maybe being released again earlier than we anticipated, I think the Vikings actually have a pretty stable connection there in their kicker and their punter. And then Ryan Wright, who's also the holder still for Greg Joseph, um, I'm actually more shocked the Vikings have some type of consistency on their special teams because Vikings fans are always waiting for a shoe to drop with one of those. Yeah, and I thought Jordan Berry would make the roster just because of not only him and Ryan Wright the preseason before Berry got released, punting-wise, they were equal as far as I'm concerned. They were both booting 50-plus yarders on the regular, but I feel like the edge that Berry had, especially in training camp, was being the placeholder whereas when ryan wright was doing it greg joseph it was a dumpster fire but to wright's credit against denver last saturday night greg joseph was perfect on all his kick attempts i believe it was two field goals one extra point so if he can carry that momentum into the regular season that's great greg joseph i think with the i i i hate i don't want to bring up the former coaching staff (laughs) anymore but it's relevant to this particular topic to where yeah kickers the energy that the former head coach brought you see a guy like daniel carlson in las vegas where when we had him he was and he was a rookie and maybe he was just all stiff in the shoulders and just nervous and i get that that's rookie jitters but and then after the game whereas the former head coach did you see the game and i get it Like, why did you let go of Kai Forbath in the first place? That team, I get that Daniel Carlson is very good right now, but as far as 2018, Kai Forbath was the kicker. There was no reason to release him. But that energy, as far as that former head coach, is gone now. So maybe Greg Joseph feels a little bit better. So kudos to him. And Ryan Wright still booting it. I mean, I forgot. (laughs) I don't have the notes right here. But against Denver, he was booting like, I think, 68, 70 yeah. plus yarders. He was great. And on holding the kicks, being the placeholder, he was fantastic. Greg Joseph was perfect on Saturday night. So I I, I feel like I hate to feel comfortable when it comes to kicking in particular with this franchise. And mind you, most Vikings fans – they are aware. Are you were you around to feel the experience of 98 Declan Goff? Like, did you have the awareness to recognize that? I did not. I was only like four, four and a half, five. So I, I was not aware. 2000 was the first one I remember. Okay. 2000, that's when I became a fan. Yeah. And so I was naive in the sense that, well, you know what? 41 Donut to the Giants. This sucks. Jason Seahorn, yeah. they're putting him against Randy Moss. What? 
what the hell is happening? But okay, it's fine. Even I, after the Gary Anderson missed kick, am just so hesitant on believing in kickers. But if Greg Joseph has that confidence to where the coaching staff, they are boosting this guy up, he's going to have the greatest season ever in 2022, then okay, go for it. But if that is the case, then that's one less stress factor on this team to where, okay, we can focus on other things. So Ryan Wright as a punter and placeholder, if it works for Greg Joseph, that works for me. Uh, back to your original point here on on the roster cuts and decisions. You know, you said, hey, just keep two quarterbacks. So if Nick Mullins is going to be the backup, who's still kind of learning the offense, he was inactive for the final preseason game. Not that it matters a whole lot. Um, so if Sean Mannion is going to be cut, you know, are you more in the camp you should still keep Kellen Mond in the 53? Or are you just now kind of ready to honestly just turn the page from it entirely? And if, and if he ends up in the practice squad, great. But are you also just kind of ready to turn the page on Kellen Mond's tenure as a member of the Vikings? I'm ready to move on. And quite honestly, it's to the point where I don't feel that he'll go on waivers and someone will just be rushing up to claim him. If you want him on the practice squad, you can do it. It'll be fine. But even still, if not, honestly, who cares? (laughs) He has not shown. I get that the first year with the former head coach, it kind of stunted his growth. But at least he's had a whole offseason a whole training camp with the new head coach who I just adore. I think he's going to do great things for this franchise to where how he has looked this preseason. Kellen Mond, we talked about that one game. Was it was it Vegas or San Francisco where he went against the fours at the end? He threw two touchdown passes, both uh, Vegas. to Albert Wilson. Okay, fine. Yeah, great. Oh, my God. But guess what? He's going against the end of the bench there. Right. I haven't seen anything from him to suggest that we are in good hands. I feel much better with Nick Mullins, who just got picked up off the street. Well, they traded for him, whatever. But I feel much better about him and his ability to quickly pick up this offense on short notice versus a guy who's been here this entire time. It looks like, quite honestly, he doesn't belong in the National Football League. That's the thing. Short passes, dump offs, screens, check downs, fine. But anything beyond that, outside wide receivers, downfield, he hasn't shown anything besides that one game with Albert Wilson, who, by the way, is gone. Yeah. There's that. Yeah, I'm I'm ready to turn the page on it, too. Um, There was these such excitement when he was first drafted. And, you know, he was a four-year starter, too, at Texas A&M, so he was no fluke in college necessarily, but it just goes to show, too, how difficult it is to play NFL quarterback. Like, there, there's a lot of good college quarterbacks, and there's only a, a select few, like basically a dozen of really, really good NFL quarterbacks in the world. And and Kellen Mond, if he wants to go somewhere else, try to make this a career good for him um, at this point. I think you stick, obviously, you stick with Nick Mullins, and if he has to start in a pinch or give you a you know, three to four games because Cousins has some type of injury, I feel a lot better about that. And if he's on a practice squad, that's the Vikings, awesome. If he gets claimed by someone else and probably gets buried on their depth chart too, also fine. You know, I, I wouldn't be shocked by that by any means either. I, I think it's time to move on. And look, we, we had, yeah, lofty expectations for him, but it's just probably not going to work out here. You know, if, if, if last year doesn't happen under Zimmer, do we have maybe a longer leash? Like if Kevin O'Connell was here from the get-go last year, and this is year two of Kevin O'Connell, has he bought himself maybe more patience or more time potentially? Um, but unfortunately, that's, you know, that's basically the card he drew his first year in the NFL. And it's not fair. I'm not trying to say it's it, it's fair, but that's kind of what happened. That's kind of what has happened here. And the Vikings are trying to win now. I need a competent backup behind Kirk if he were to ever miss time. So if Nick Mullins is that dude, and that means Kellen Mond is the, you know, casualty, if you will, on that, I'm okay with it. So I'm I'm not gonna lose sleep. Um, Randy, any other like surprise roster cuts or anything that stood out to you from the preseason? We're like oh, 10 days, o- or uh, not 10 days away, 10 days away from the NFL season starting, a little less than two weeks from the regular season starting for the Vikings against the Packers. Uh, any other uh, preseason thoughts to wrap up with here? Not really. I think the wide receiver group is locked up with Myra Mitchell being cut and, goodness, B.C. Johnson having the ACL tear. I feel like with T.Y. McGill being released, 
Jalen Twyman, he should make the roster, but I, I don't know if I can really be knock on wood surprised by any more roster cuts at this point than what's expected to happen. But as far as I'm concerned, any sort of let's run into the season with three quarterbacks, that's over with. You yep. can free up a roster spot for someone else. You can feel good with Kirk Cousins and Nick Mullins. And guess what? Kirk Cousins, who's been Iron Man in his career as far as stability, durability, even if there was some chance that he were to get hurt, I feel better about the Vikings. Nick Mullins, he starts for a couple of games. You feel good about that. But even to replace the backup QB2 at that point, you can pick up someone off the street and be just fine instead yeah. of putting the roster in jeopardy by carrying a Sean Mannion or Kellen Mond right now. I, wouldn't, I don't I think wouldn't, I can be surprised anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if like one of those dudes like ends up in Seattle, like, you know, the Seahawks named Geno Smith over Drew Locke to be their week one starter. And, you know, I think they wanted Locke to be their guy. He got COVID, kind of had a setback there. They, they basically admitted like, you know, we wanted Drew Locke to be QB1. Got COVID, got lost in the shuffle. Geno Smith is now more familiar with the offense. I get it. I wonder if that's like a team that probably could take a chance on a Mannion, takes a chance on more of a Kellen Mond uh, sure. as, as a project guy. Like, I can see that happen. So, um, well, Randy, I mean, I'm, I'm just ready for the season. I told Judd and Mackie this uh, yesterday and even today that now that the preseason is over with, I want regular football. Dude, like, I, I, I don't, I'm, as, as fun as it is to break down third defensive tackles mm-hmm. on our depth chart, I'm more I'm more interested in actual watching meaningful football games or having great conversations about maybe making a, a splash trade before the season starts. So you and I have one more off-season episode before the yep. real damn thing happens two weeks from now when you and I will be breaking down the first game against the Green Bay Packers after week one. So we're getting there. We're excited. Um, hit the subscribe button for Daily Minnesota Vikings Entertainment on this channel. Subscribe to Realistic Randy's YouTube channel. It's great Vikings content, some great sketches. You, you like to bring the comedy. I love that. I think that's absolutely hilarious that you come up with all these great skits. So do that. Hit the subscribe button there as well. All right, my man. Um, I'll be talking to you next Monday. And maybe if another trade goes down, we'll see what happens. But uh, I love that you put out an, into the universe even another trade that the Vikings could make. Look at you just creating things out of thin air. I'm a big fan of it. Mike Gusecki, make it happen, happen. Quazy. Value? You want value? Do it. Mike Gusecki.